So I wanted to, I guess, move on to the question of Jewish ethnocentrism, um, because this is sort of like another uh, classic argument that gets put forward a lot, which is, you know, Jews are helping out other Jews, and also they are <laughs> acting in ways that, uh, I guess, harm or disadvantage Gentiles. Um, and there's sort of like two notes that you make in this section of the paper about why that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, it, I mean, you bring up some interesting historical, historical examples as well. You talk about Karl Marx and his statements on Jews, but um, one of them being the high rates of intermarriage and the low fertility. Um, and so, um, you know, is the basic, the, the gist of this is that, Jews just don't seem to be particularly more ethnocentric than other groups, correct? Um, I should preface this by saying that ethnocentrism is a very poorly defined um, construct. Uh, so McDonald and, and his followers throw the word around a lot. They say Jews are ethnocentric, and then people argue about it, and, uh, and then I argue with him. And then, but none of us really explain what it means. Um, you know, is it ethnocentric to, you know, to try to convert people to Judaism? Okay. Like members of different races to, to, to Judaism, is that ethnocentrism or is it ethnocentric to, bring in a bunch of Ethiopians who identify as Jews to Israel like um or it's uh a lot of people kind of um are quite wishy-washy about their with their language uh now in uh uh I think it was the first book McDonald said that uh, the Jewish group evolutionary strategy has four basic components. And the first component was that it seeks segregation of the Jewish gene pool from surrounding Gentile societies. Mm. So that was McDonald's state, statement uh, that uh, racial purity. So segregating the Jewish gene pool from surrounding Gentile societies. Now, Defining ethnocentrism in that way, which is, I mean, that what he said is the point of the Jewish group evolutionary strategy. That means that the evolutionary strategy doesn't involve mass intermarriage. Because, I mean, if we just take his word seriously, that doesn't make any sense that the Jewish evolutionary strategy would culminate in mass intermarriage. Mm -hmm. And in fact, he predicted that. Um, Although, and, and so he himself has referred to intermarriage as defection and as something that's contrary to the strategy. And uh, he predicted in 1998 that as time went on, Jews would, although there had been some intermarriage, Jews would find a way to stop to stop it and return to the Jewish group evolutionary strategy. Now, among non-Orthodox Jews who married in the, since 2010, the intermarriage rate has been 72%. And that doesn't include, so that's just reported intermarriage. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include Jews who, in, who intermarry with Gentiles who undergo a kind of nominal reform conversion. Right. So that means you you pay the 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 rabbi, uh, and then she says you're Jewish, uh, based on that. Right. Congratulations. Then, oh, so that's not racial purity. Mm. Not, and that's not traditional Judaism, obviously. So the intermarriage rate is probably higher than seventy two percent. The liberal Jews, yeah, I mean there there'll be a certain number of. of uh, Jewish Jewish marriages because you know, these people kind of living in New York, some of the same areas, just randomly, they'll marry each other. But it's really, um, 
liberal Jews just don't care about marrying each other. And they've not created any kind of institutions to stop intermarriage. They just don't care. Mm -hmm. And the population is completely disappearing. Like even with I, not that old, but even within my memory, you know, I remember there were a lot of half Jews and then now like, yeah, my grandfather's Jewish. So then it will be I'm one eighth Jewish, uh, you know, someone like Tim Wise. There are some people with quite distant Jewish ancestry who, who uh, some liberals who identify as Jewish because that gives them uh, oppression points. Like Tim Wise, who's one of yeah. the major causes of anti-Semitism in America. Mm. He has one Jewish grandfather. I, I just have to say, what? Why do? You, why is he one of the main causes of anti-Semitism in America? Well, I mean, he's a very obnoxious, kind of cartoonish, anti-white advocate uh, okay. who says kind of genocidal, uh, right. anti-white statements about how the, the you know the days of the white people are numbered, and that's a good yeah. thing. Right. Uh, and then he says, and I'm a Jew, I'm a Jew, and I'm saying this as a Jew. <laughs> and he's his father's father is Jewish. Right. right. So yeah. according to Jewish law, you're Jewish if your mother is Jewish. So, And Tim Weiss doesn't even go to a synagogue. He doesn't practice Judaism. He's just saying that he's Jewish just to kind of push people's buttons, as far as I can tell. But anyway... Uh, and his wife is not Jewish at all. So his kids will be one eighth Jewish. I mean, maybe they'll. Why is you're an imposter? So <laughs> go around. Uh, so you know. So there's this this element of ethnocentrism, even though it's not well defined. Presumably, one element of ethnocentrism is you want to be around your ethnic group, and the most mm. obvious expression of wanting to be around your ethnic group is marrying somebody from your ethnic group uh, and then producing children who are also members of the group. And now, liberal Jews don't care about that. Now, uh, what about... Uh, so Jewish success is often held up as proof of Jewish eth ethnocentrism because well how could Jews win so many Nobel prizes unless there was ethnocentrism but, so we already talked about that um, and that's not a good argument uh, um, and I just say as a footnote I'm not saying that ethnocentrism is zero because right? there every group has some ethnocentrism uh, and but I'm not saying that there was never a time when a Jew applied to a position in Hollywood and the interviewer said, oh, hey, you know, Bernstein, uh, mm -hmm. uh, cool name, uh, uh, you know, and then Bernstein got the job over, you know, Chris, Chris Willard or, or whatever. Uh, so I'm sure that has happened. It's also happened on the other side, too, right? which we hear about a lot about how Jews were discriminated against. Um, and Jews weren't allowed to belong to Gentile country clubs where they could go and intermarry. Um, uh, so, but there's no reason to think that Jews are particularly ethnocentric compared to other people, um, or that there's they have a genetic disposition to be particularly ethnocentric compared to other people. And mm -hmm. as I've pointed out. If we, if we had this discussion in the 1920s and 1930s, we'd have very different intuitions about who is ethnocentric. Right? We'd, we'd say that Germans are the most ethnocentric people, obviously. And obviously it's innate. It's obviously genetic. Um, we didn't know about DNA at that time. But we, we would have said it's innate. Uh, that's just uh, how they are. They'll never change. And now they're the least ethnocentric people in the world. So there's also a very large environmental component to ethnocentrism. Um, and, you know, very, so the, the people who try to draw um, conclusions about innate uh, ethnic differences in ethnocentrism based on uh, current behavior, 
I think that's a very questionable thing to do. And anyway, Jews don't, uh, at least liberal Jews, don't uh, show much evidence of ethnocentrism.